Today I'll be unboxing the Gigabyte Z68X UD3H B3. So this has most of the features you have come to expect from Gigabyte, including Touch BIOS hybrid EFI technology, which allows you to use three terabyte plus hard drives, a three year warranty in the US and Canada, ultra durable three. It's got Nvidia SLI, AMD Crossfire, and it supports all the latest Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors on LGA 1155. Let's look around on the back of the board and have a look if they have anything else to say for themselves. Yes, we've got dual BIOS, which allows you to restore it to the other physical BIOS chip, even if you corrupt the BIOS during a flash. We have 3x USB power, which allows you to charge uh, more powerful devices and run more powered devices off a hub than you can on competing motherboards. We have USB 3, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, and driver MOSFETs, which reduces mounting area by 50%, apparently. Interesting. The onboard audio includes a 108 decibel sound to noise ratio, and that is definitely a good thing. More sound, less noise, always a plus. We have four SATA cables included, two straight, two right angle. We have an IO shield, which has convenient color coding on it. We we have a little warning telling you not to put a socket 1156 CPU in this board, and we have an SLI cable. Next we have a user's manual with a useless utility DVD. Download the latest off the Gigabyte website to make sure you have the latest versions. Finally, a Dolby home theater sticker and a multilingual installation guidebook. Next we have the board itself, which has foam. Look at that. Never seen foam on a motherboard like that before. And I'm not even being facetious, I have never seen foam mounted on a motherboard like that. So let's go ahead and find out why it has foam on it. And take that out. Oh, beautiful motherboard. Especially for like a value price point board. So there you go, that is to, I'm gonna go ahead and guess, prevent the MOSFET heatsink from moving around during shipping. There you go because it does use plastic push pins. So while those are not a risk, while the board is stationary, while it's being moved around, yeah, it could loosen the uh, bond between the thermal compound and the MOSFETs themselves. So let's have a look at the overall layout of this guy right here. We're gonna start with our 1155 socket in the middle of the board. So that's where you put your CPU. Then we're gonna move on to our Looks like one, two, three, four, six plus one phase power design. We've got our eight pin connector in the top left of the board in its ideal location. We've got our dual channel DDR3 RAM over here on the side and our 24 pin connector also in its ideal location. We've got seven SATA ports. So this is SATA 36 gigabit per second. Right here is SATA 36 gigabit per second. And we've got three SATA 2, uh, three gigabit per second. So this one's running off the Intel chipset. This one's running off a third party chipset. These ones are gonna be your higher performing ones and these are your fallbacks. The last SATA port is going to be on the back panel of the motherboard and I'm a big fan of that running Intel uh, off the Intel chipset because it can be more convenient for RAID configurations. Here are our front panel connectors as well as our front USB 3.0 Firewire powered front USB. Remember you can charge a tablet off the one with the red background and then one, two, three more front USB headers. In terms of the PCI slot layout, we've got one, two, three PCI 1X, two PCI 16X, although this one is only wired electrically to 8X and two PCI slots. This is a very, very solid layout because it's going to give you two PCI 1X and one PCI left if you install two dual slot cards. On the back here, we've got a variety of good features. Remember, this is a Z68 motherboard, so we have video out, including VGA, DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Yes, everything is supported. We've got one, two, three, four USB 2.0 ports, one of those PS2 keyboard mouse combo ports, optical audio out, FireWire, eSATA off the Intel chipset, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, and 7.1 audio out. So I would say an ideal type configuration for a motherboard like this is making sure that you've got a nice, decent quad-core CPU. I mean, if you're gonna get the Z68 chipset, you might as well go for a quad-core. This is a high-end chipset. Also, you're gonna to wanna to put, most people aren't gonna be running SLI or Crossfire on a board like this, although you will have the option to maybe go with a value board, like uh, our value card, like a good bang for, I shouldn't say value, because they're still expensive, but a bang for the buck card, like a GTX 560 or a Radeon 6870, something along those lines. RAM is so cheap these days, so I'd probably throw eight gigs of RAM. I'd throw an SSD in here. Remember, this board supports Lucid Virtue, so you can use the onboard video here, 
out the onboard video here and still use your dedicated graphics for games, but you can use this one to do video transcoding. And it also supports Intel SRT technology, so you can take a 60 gig SSD, even a SATA 3 one, throw it on the SATA 3 port, and then throw a, a big hard drive, like a WD Black, on one of the other ports in order to use the SSD as a cache for awesome performance without blowing a bunch of money on a 120 or 240 gig SSD. Thank you for checking out my unboxing. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.